With true zeal, the new teaching proceeds with its messianic task of remaking the human material by a steady, relentless process of interrogating, informing, and repeating, using all the techniques of group pressure known to modern psychology, the modern sex educators pursue their goal. Obviously, the few minutes it would take to explain sexual reproduction alone are out of the question. For its ends, the program must be mandated, must extend from, quote, kindergarten throughout a person's entire educational career, end quote. Ever seeking the captive audience, the sex educators launched one of their earliest drives on the youngsters in the custody of the state. The California Youth Authority, responsible for imprisoned juveniles, developed a family life education program in 1972. It featured co-educational discussions of lovemaking, slang terminology, birth control, abortion, masturbation, homosexuality, and prostitution. It discussed multiple orgasms in women and the male's erectile endurance limits and the importance of regularity in active sexual expression. It included a section on the problem of impotence, and it provided a background paper urging acceptance of homosexuality. In reviewing their government-funded experiences, both at home and abroad, the promoters of sex education admit that young people will not voluntarily come to birth control clinics for information or services. Promotion is necessary, and sex education in the classroom is an obvious method of outreach. Another common technique is peer education and peer counseling, in which young people are engaged and trained to recruit their peers for sex education and birth control. They will also offer youth a range of activities, including sex education and birth control through multi-service centers, which are padded with other services such as vocational training, recreation, arts and crafts instruction, and entertainment. The model for this approach, which is now being duplicated in foreign countries, is the door in New York City. In the opinion of the proponents of adolescent fertility management, such multi-service centers offer a discreet and confidential alternative to ordinary birth control clinics which teenagers avoid. Sex education promoters in the United States and abroad lure young people through enticing entertainments and amusements such as condom blowing competitions, youth contests on family planning themes, parenthetically poster making, slogan writing, essay competition, and parenthetical, skits, plays, musical productions, as well as letter columns in community newspapers, mobile shows, television, and radio programming. Teens-only newspaper columns provided by Planned Parenthood in the United States have explained French kissing, what happens if you forget to take your birth control pills for three or four days, and why parents think sex is dirty. The International Clearinghouse on Adolescent Fertility reported on the, quote, positive impact on the adolescent population of a current disco hit about condom usage, end quote. The same agency has also reported that in some countries where legal constraints prevent birth controllers from openly distributing contraceptives to minors, they skirt the law by advertising their activities as, quote, educational efforts only, end quote, and in many places in the United States, sex educators distribute contraceptives in the schools. It is hardly surprising that parents in the United States have objected to the programs, in some cases bringing lawsuits against them, and that citizens of foreign countries have complained that the sex educators are corrupting their youth. In promoting their program, the sex educators have shown they are masters of the system familiar to development planners. The initial public grants to sex education were used to create a demand for still more. Then, too, the new instruction required teachers, and teachers needed special training in special classes in colleges and universities. This, in turn, created a demand for textbooks, films, and other instructional materials in addition to the books, pamphlets, and films prepared for children. The sex educators have also mastered the art of coalition building, establishing friendly relations and cooperative projects with a slew of groups, the PTA, the Girl Scouts, 
Campfire, the YWCA, 4-H Clubs, the American Medical Association, the National Education Association, numerous church groups, and others. Their professional government-paid staff members provide information, publish bulletins, and offer workshops on how to build support, get government grants, and neutralize any opposition. The strategy is always to make it appear that local parents are, quote, demanding family life education, end quote, in the schools for their children. In its pamphlet, Creating a Climate of Support for Sex Education, Planned Parenthood of Alameda, San Francisco, summarized the strategy. Quote, Pack the boardroom with your supporters. Avoid a public encounter with the opposition. End quote. Special programs for parents using teachers of their same ethnic background can also help to create a climate of support. The result of this careful, publicly funded planning and formation of alliances is, as in any war, to win control before the opposition can organize a defense. The groups advocating sex education have maintained steady pressure on elementary and high school teachers, as well as the leaders of secular and religious youth groups, to take sexuality training, offering college credits for their courses. In 1980, a new state law required students at the California State Universities and Colleges to finish a course in human integration before graduation, and a course in sex would fulfill the requirement. Years before this, colleges and universities had begun housing their students in co-educational dormitories, had dismissed their house mothers and chaperones, and had abolished curfew. They did this on their own initiative, without the request of students or their parents. Student health insurance covered abortion, student protests and lawsuits not availing. In the 1980s and 1990s, some students were wondering whether the old days hadn't been better. A 1976 law in California stimulated demand by requiring all persons applying for licenses as clinical social workers, marriage counselors, and trainees in related fields to take training in human sexuality. Throughout the nation, new job classifications have come into being to staff the government-funded sex industry. In addition to the high-level sexologists who publish each other's articles in their proliferating sex journals, speak at each other's conferences, and recommend each other for honorary advanced degrees, there were by 1980 many thousands of health educators who worked in the schools and abortion clinics and campaigned for sympathetic candidates for public office. This created members for new professional organizations and lobbying groups, such as the American Association of Sex Educators, Counselors, and Therapists. Once in operation, the new sex programs called for evaluation, which provided the occasion for still more millions in public grants. The evaluators, in turn, found that a principal effect of the programs is to produce attitudinal change and, quote, to increase the student's tolerance of the sexual practices of others, end quote. Such changes in knowledge and attitude should, they thought, quote, facilitate a more positive and fulfilling sexuality, end quote. A Falls Church evaluation found that after sex education, more students regarded sex before marriage as easy. Two studies published by the Guttmacher Institute in 1986 found that youngsters who had received sex education had an elevated probability of engaging in premarital sex activity at an early age. None of the evaluations has found that sex education reduces adolescent pregnancy, though several report that where the school program includes ready access to abortion, teenagers have fewer babies. Almost all studies, of course, have discovered a great need for more government funds for further research. Since the accounting is extremely loose, it is not clear how much of the hundreds of millions of dollars annually spent by the U.S. government on domestic family planning is routed to sex education. The House Select Committee on Population reported in 1978 that, quote, instead of being earmarked for family life and sex education, funds are usually included among those for multi-service programs in health, welfare, social services, education, and maternal and infant care, end quote. The committee went on to state that federal sex education grants are provided by the Health Service Administration's Bureau of Community Health Services. 
the National Institute of Education, and the Bureau of Health Education within the Centers for Disease Control. Another ganglia of agencies that, quote, may be devoting unspecified funds to sex education, end quote, include the National Institute of Mental Health, the Office of Child Development, the Bureau of Education for the Handicapped, parenthetically, Sex Education for the Handicapped is now a thriving federally supported business, end parenthetical, and the Bureau of Indian Health Services. Since this report, the Federal Office of Adolescent Pregnancy has joined the list. Additional sums are contributed by the states and private foundations and drug companies, all too eager to sell their contraceptives and abortion supplies, have added muscle to the movement by advertising in its journals and making direct contributions. The operations of the new sex education have been justified by quantities of research into the most intimate aspects of human sexual behavior. The most famous center of such research is the Kinsey Institute for Research on Sex, Gender, Reproduction, Incorporated at Indiana University. The founder of the institute, Alfred Kinsey, became famous for his minutely detailed description of the sexual behavior of men, women, and children. Kinsey and his co-authors, including Wardell Pomeroy, parenthetically author of Sex Books for Children, unparenthetical, portrayed hundreds of reactions of young children, some of them less than a year old, undergoing a variety of sexual stimulation. Kinsey reported that many of these children subjected to, quote, prolonged and varied and repeated stimulation, end quote, for as long as 24 hours in some instances, struggled, wept, and went into convulsions. The experiments continued until Kinsey and his co-authors had amassed enough material to publish four statistical tables describing the detailed sexual responses of young children to stimulation by adults, by older boys, and by themselves. Dr. Judith Reisman of American University subsequently investigated the manner of the research and published a book about it. The conclusion of Reisman and her co-author was that no man in modern times has shaped public attitudes to human sexuality more than the late Alfred C. Kinsey. The foundation for some key Kinsey conclusions still accepted today as scientific fact is, is research conducted on human subjects illegally and against their will. They dedicated their book to, quote, the several hundred children who suffered inhumanely in the illegal sex experiments that constitute the basis for a significant portion of Dr. Alfred Kinsey's book, Sexual Behavior in the Human Male, end quote. The family planning sex education industry now boasts thousands of employees dependent one way or another on government funding. For economic as well as ideological reasons, the industry is outraged by suggestions it should be weaned from public support. In the words of veteran sex grants recipient Peter Scales, those who oppose the new school sex education are a powerful threat to a democratic society. They seek to impose censorship in the public schools and threaten our First Amendment freedom, the freedom of speech, and the freedom of and from religion. He saw great danger in the attempts of some groups to, quote, remove state and federal regulation over private schools, end quote, and was shocked that his critics were permitted to buy television time to bring their case before the public. In 1996, Planned Parenthood denounced the, quote, electoral takeover of the 104th Congress by the short-sighted, mean-spirited ideology of the far right, end quote, and the religious political extremists associated with it. It fought congressional funding for abstinence-only sexuality programs, it launched a national voter participation project, and of course, it continued promoting smaller families. As we have seen, the world population bureaucracy has promoted sex education in the programs of the international conferences in Cairo and elsewhere. Undeterred by the consternation which this has aroused, the World Health Organization and other groups plunged ahead to form an alliance in October 1996 to promulgate sex education worldwide, who announced that it was working together with the UN Economic and Social Council, UNAIDS, parenthetical, yet another UN bureaucracy with a mission indicated by its name, and parenthetical, and Education International and International Umbrella Teachers Union. The intent is to use the world's schools to provide 
effective sex education. For this, teachers' unions will need to provide sexuality training baited with financial incentives to school personnel, employing awareness training, role play and drama, and on and on in the usual jargon of the sex educators. A UNESCO brochure gives several reasons for the organization's passionate interest in sex education. Not only to prevent AIDS, but to promote sustainable development and to build responsibility in pupils so that they do not overpopulate the world. It will require unceasing effort and real determination on the part of governments. Using clarification of values, it will overcome the traditional stereotypes of male and female. Echoing the phrases of the sex materials that have been in use in the United States in recent decades, the brochure emphasizes that this new population education will permeate all school subject matter. It will, quote, change mental habits and attitudes, end quote, and children will become the educators of their parents, passing on what they have learned in school. UNESCO is in an excellent position to accomplish its mission with 60 offices throughout the world from Moscow to Pretoria and Kinshasa to Phnom Penh as well as a host of powerful allies. Thus the forces of population control, sex education, are massed at the gates of every school and every home on earth to ensure that the world's children are inculcated, nay steeped, in the spirit of the age. that you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. <sighs> Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. 